Christ, what makes us unique that is that we want to speak and say the things of God. Right. And, and the only way we can do that is if we can read it in the Word of God. Amen. Being that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the Bible declared that without faith, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh out to God must believe that he is. And the only way you can believe how God is is that you read how God is. Amen. And not heard how God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because too many times we're going by what people say. True. Then we need to do like they did in the old, I mean, the New Testament times of the old Doberians did. We got to search the scripture to see whether or not things are so. Mm -hmm. In other words, that means we're going to have to crack the lens of our Bible. Right. And find out what God said about any issue in our life. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to take a certain element and a certain ingredient that we're going to have to apply in our life to do it. Mm -hmm. What is that, Brother Smith? It's going to take love. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to have love for truth. We got to have love for God and love for one another. Amen. If we're going to please God, because how can we serve and, and love God whom we never see? Right. Then we can't even get along and love one another. Amen. And the closest thing that we're going to have to God down here is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the Bible says oh, all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God, that God breathed. If you really want to know what God said, and how God feels, you're going to have to read the word of God. Amen. Because all, right? all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And then he tells us that they are profitable. That means they are good for us. All right. For every situation we got, we need some word of God on it. Amen. We don't need to be trying to figure out anything. We don't need to guess about it. We don't need no, no, no uh, 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 philosophy. Right. What we need is God's truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said you should know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. Now all of us need to be free of something this morning. All, right. all of us got something that, that have us and hold us in captivity. Mm -hmm. Having us doing things we don't want to do, but we find ourselves doing it. Amen. Right. That's true. We become enslaved to that thing. Mm -hmm. And we need to be free from it. Amen. Because we understand that who the Son of God set free. He's free indeed. Amen. Uh, once you know you've been set free, uh, oh, it's a lifestyle that we don't know nothing about to be free. Mm. You know, all of us, we want to be free to do our own thing, but God don't set us free to do our own thing. God make us free to do what he wants us to do. Because right. only then are you truly free. Mm -hmm. When you start doing what you want to do, you'll bring yourself back again in captivity in, 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 in bondage to the better elements of this world because all we want is worldly things. True. And they bring us under captivity. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. The Bible said if a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing. It does. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, you got to make sure that that wife ain't worldly. Amen. <laughs> Then you're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and I think all of us got a little worldliness in us. Amen. Amen. But some a little more than others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you have your Bibles, let's look at the book of John, the 14th chapter. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start at verse 14 and 15. And we're going to try to get a lesson that I think that will help us. And Lord, help me this morning because I want to get done. I want to finish quick. I'm looking at the clock. And I'm saying to myself. And I'm saying to this congregation by 1230, I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done even if I'm in the middle of my lesson. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done if you go to sleep. I'm going to be done when you wake up. But I'm going to be done this morning. One day. By 1230. Somebody want to get me. All right. All right. <laughs> Amen. You know, we, we got people of God want to see if something be done. Amen. So I got a great responsibility this morning. And let your yay be yay and your nay be yay. In other words, I just made an oath that I can't break. Right. Amen. Right. Y'all going to hold me to the oath just like God going to hold you to the oath that you made when you became a child of God. Right. You promised some things to God that you would do and would not do. Right. But guess what? You broke them promises. Right. <laughs> Amen. Right. And the pot can't call the kettle black. Right. Uh, but we're we going to be all right this morning. Just stay with me. John the 14th chapter beginning at verse 14. The Bible says, now let me back up a little bit because I, I want to get the gist of all this uh, uh, so we can understand. Look at verse 12. When Jesus is talking to his apostles, he is, he is telling them something about himself and, uh, and his mission and also something about them. Because they looked at Jesus and they, they saw all the wonderful miracles that he did and all the great things that he did. And, and, and surely if we saw what Jesus did, we would be all by it. In other words, it would it would knock us off our feet. When 
But Jesus can speak to the sea and the, and the wind and, and they be obedient to Jesus. And we can see Jesus walk across water and, and these are the things that they did. Mm -hmm. They saw all this. And so they, they, they gave much attention to Jesus when he talked and when he did something. But, but listen to this in verse 12. It says, most assuredly, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the work that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to the, my Father. And whatsoever thing you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in, in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if you love me, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, now these all excite us to understand that Jesus says, whatever we ask in his name, he said, I will do. And the Bible said, you know, uh, God can't lie. Right. Uh, and, uh, and he's not a man that he shall lie. Amen. And neither anything that the Son of Man have to repent of. So if he promised that, if we ask anything that's named, he will do. Yeah. See, some of us, we need to understand uh, the secret to this passage is that if we ask in his name. Amen. See, sometimes we ask in our own name. Uh -huh. For our own responsibility and our own getting. To ask anything in Jesus' name means to ask it about his authority. Right. We got to ask it how it is written in the book. We got to understand what Jesus wants in order to ask it for in his name. Uh -huh. Sometimes we can ask it in our own name. Amen. Yeah, well, he's not obligated to give it to us. Amen. We got to understand, first of all, what God's will is. And I can tell you the number one will of God is that all men can be saved. Mm -hmm. We understand this by the book of uh, Matthew, the the 28th chapter. Right. But just before he went back to heaven. Mm -hmm. He said all powers are given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore what God will is. And by the name of Jesus Christ. He wants us to all to go. Right. Amen. That's right. You want some stuff. You got to do what he tells us to do. That's true. He told us go ye therefore and teach all nations. Right. You didn't have to ask that whether or not it's in his name. It is by his authority because he the one has all power. Right. And because he got all powers, he's telling us what he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And like I say, the key to you doing, getting what he asked, uh, all the things that you asked of, uh, of him, right. he's got to do what he said to do. Right. Right. Amen. He said, because if you love me, keep my commandment. True. See, uh, there's a lot of things we want. But under the condition of keeping his commandment, we don't do. True. Amen. The reason why we're falling short of what we desire is because we don't desire to please God. Right. That's our first mission is to please God. And we got to find out what it is to please God. Amen. The Bible said God is the spirit and they that worship him. I believe that God desires for us to worship him. That's right. Come on, church. Amen. Have we kept that commandment to, the, to worship God as he desires us to worship him? Most of the time we have not. No. But then, on the other hand, we want to ask God for some stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. It's just like this. When I was a young child, they used to have uh, uh, soda bottles. Some of y'all up north call them pops. Yeah. And they used to put the soda in a glass bottle. And on the bottle, or somewhere on that bottle, it depends on what kind of bottle it is, it tells you it was a five cent deposit on that bottle. Right. Even when that bottle bottle was empty, it was still worth five cents. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So the bottle was never rendered no good from uh, the bottling company. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you look at it. Right. See, some of us, when we got through with the content in the bottle, we threw the bottle away. Right. But somebody understood that was value in the bottle. Right. So in other words, if I can get the bottle, I can get the deposit that was made on the bottle. Right. See, you got to understand, you just didn't buy the content in the bottle, you bought the bottle too. Mm -hmm. But after you got the content, oh, don't some of us do like that. That's why we do Jesus. Yeah. Um, when we come in and say, I've been baptized, but you got to understand... That's the, it's not just the content in the bottle, it's the bottle itself. That's right. That carries value. I'm talking about the church. All right. All right. See, we don't understand when we come to church that the church is the body, the body of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants Jesus, but they don't want the church. True. All right. 
Man, let me tell you something. So you got to understand, if you want to get what you desire to do, you got to please God first. Right. Because it comes like this. Now, when I found the bottle, I can turn it in for a deposit. Uh -huh. Whether or not I drank the content, they wasn't concerned about the content. They were concerned about the bottle. That's right. Because you can't have no content mm -hmm. without the bottle. Am I? Oh, y'all, y'all looking at me straight. So you got to understand one thing. If you don't put nothing in it, you can't get nothing out of it. And no deposit, no return. No return. And most of us, that's how we live with God even in the church. We think just because we've been baptized and become members of the church, and that is enough. But let me tell you something. you got to put something in it in order to get something out of it. That's just how it is. He said, what's what you ask? He said, he'll do. But what did you put in it? Right. Look, look here. I want us to understand, we got to understand the mind of God in order to please God. You can't just do it haphazardly. It just does not happen. How often do we meet a God? Hey, man. All right. Let's go look at our Bibles in John. Just a couple of chapters back, the fourth chapter. I'm going to be done here a little bit. I'm looking at this clock because I'm going to be done. I'm getting ready to start my sermon here in a little bit. I got to set up the foundation. Listen. John the fourth chapter. I want us to understand this. God want to give us some stuff. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I come to give you life that you might have it more abundantly. God want us to enjoy this life that he gave mm -hmm. to us. He don't want us to be miserable. No, that is not God's desire. Mm -hmm. If he wanted to be miserable, why did he create us? Yeah. To be miserable. Mm -mm. And, and because we became miserable in sin, God wanted to fix it. Amen. So God don't want us miserable. Because sin will make you miserable. Amen. The Bible declared that the way of a transgressor is hard. Mm -hmm. And God don't want us to have it hard. But something we're going to understand about God. In John 4th chapter, I want you to read with me now. Jesus is now talking to the Samaritan woman while he sat here at the well and they converse with one another. He, there's something that he want her to know and not just her, he want us to know. See, because sometimes we're lost because we don't have the proper understanding. True. We don't have what we need or what we desire is because we don't have the proper understanding of who God is. Right. Am I right about it? Amen. See, see, God don't misunderstand himself. We misunderstand God. And then because we misunderstand God, we misunderstand our own selves. Because we don't know who we are without God. Because God created us. Now, as he was talking to the woman, Jesus in verse 21 said, Jesus said unto the woman, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. What is the problem here? Uh, the ideal and, and the content of this lesson is worship. See, 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 God, Jesus wants us to understand something about worship. That means you can't worship something you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And you won't worship nothing that you don't love. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I, boy, I, I got to stick with the clock. <laughs> you can't worship something you don't understand. Right. And you will not worship nothing you don't love. Amen. So Jesus is trying to get her to understand the concept of worship. Although she was already practicing worship, but he wanted to let her know that your worship was wrong. Mm -hmm. Just because you worship it don't mean it's right. Amen. Don't mean it is acceptable of God. Uh -huh. Yeah, you loved it. You put all your heart in it. But what did God say about it? Amen. Worship ain't even worship until God accepted. Right. Now he's trying to get us to understand. He's trying to get her to understand this church. Listen, he said. He said, the hour is coming when ye neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship what ye know not. We know what we worship for salvation. See, worship, you can't have salvation without proper worship. Mm -hmm. So you got a whole lot of people claiming to have salvation, but yet still, this morning they worshiping God wrong. Amen. Because they're not worshiping God how He desired to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. They going off their own, and they got their own doctrine, mm -hmm. their own teaching, mm -hmm. based upon their feelings. Oh, yes. 
God don't go by just feelings. See, our feelings get us wrong with God when it comes to worship. Amen. We have a concept and an idea of how God desired to be worshipped. That's foolish for me to try to figure it out when he told me mm -hmm. how to get it done. Ain't it foolish, church? Come on, yes. now. Right. But we, we, we want to feel. I, I feel God. No, God, you don't have to feel after God. Jesus mm -hmm. said you should know the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth shall make you free. Uh -huh. Don't be feeling anything. God was not concerned about how we felt. God had an obligation to save us because he loved us. Right. Come on, church. So I want you to see this now. He said, you worship what you know not, but we worship what we know for salvation is of the Jews. So that let me know that if people ain't got it right, they can be wrong. No matter how sincere they are, and no matter how much they love what they're doing, right. it can be wrong. True. Jesus said in Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 8 and 9, and yet still we don't go over and read and understand. This people draw now to be with their mouth, mm -hmm. and they honor me with their lips. Yes. But their hearts are far from that. See, when your heart ain't in it, it ain't really love. Mm -mm. Y'all hear me? When your heart ain't in it. Yeah. And God knows the heart. You do. When your heart ain't in it, you can, you can put on all the performance you want. That's it. But God is looking at the heart. Right. You can deceive everybody in the world, but you can't fool God. I know. Because God looks right through us at the heart. Amen. At the very seat of man, God can see. Mm-hmm. He know all about you. Amen. You can't fool him by your frivolous acts. <laughs> God look at you and laugh at you. Because mm -hmm. he can look at the very seat of your heart. So he said salvation is of the Jews. But look what he said. But the hour is coming. Mm -hmm. I thank God that it was coming. <laughs> I don't know about you. In other words, this should make her understand that she didn't have to stay in the condition that she was. He said because the hour is coming. Let me tell you, he didn't say the day was coming. He said the hour is coming because God ain't limited by time. Right. The hour is coming. Listen to this. When true worshipers, that, that, that's what I want you to get. When true worshipers, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. See, sometimes we got to understand we got our own ideal and concept of what God wants and what he desires from us and how we're going to do it. But God said, no, it's not like that. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do. So I got to find out what pleases God and do it. And then when I ask of God, guess what? He's obligated to do it. Amen. Because he can't lie. Mm -mm. Oh, no, he can't lie. He's God. And guess what? And I know he won't lie. Because God is not slack like us. No. We slack. Oh, we tell people we're going to do something to do that. And in other words, let me tell you incidentally, ain't no need in us saying we're going to do something without saying if it be the Lord's will. Mm -hmm. Because we can't do anything without God. Amen. You can make all the plans you want, but you can't do it without God. Because uh -uh. if God don't permit it, it won't happen. Amen. I don't care how urgent you think it is. I don't care how important you think it is. If God don't help us, or see us fit right. to do it. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. That's right. Amen. I know we got plans. We thought about tomorrow what we're going to do. But it's still if it be God's will. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Because tomorrow is not promised to none of us. No. Not even the next minute. No. It's not promised to us. Do we get that ideal and that concept? Do we really understand that we all have our, our, our life in the palm of God's hand? Right. And we do. And any time he wanna snuff us out, he can and can't nobody question him. Okay. And can't nobody change his mind. Okay. Because he's God. But he said what he said to the woman, he said, uh the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh such. Mm -hmm. That's the key, y'all. God is looking for true worshipers. Right. Because the true worshipers are the ones that, if you love me, keep my command. Yeah. Like Y'all hear what I'm saying? Right. See, we, 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 we think we can fool God. I want you to understand what God is looking for is a love relationship. Mm -hmm. That's what it's based on love. Yeah. 
is a love relationship if you want to get the things that you ask of God. God can deliver them. No problem with that. Because the world is God in the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. God said all of it's mine. Right. But if you love me, keep my commandment. Mm -hmm. Don't just be asking for stuff and it's not according to my, my will. Because mm -hmm. if it's according to see, somebody said, Lord, I want a big, shiny, brand new car. He said, you're going to bring folk to church with it? <laughs> no, they can't sit on my seat. You won't get that one. Uh -uh. Well, you can be determined to get it. <laughs> Amen. You can be determined to get it. You can work overtime, split shift, overnight, but God can still make it possible That's for right. you not to get it. Amen. Because let me tell you something. If God's will, we ought to be trying to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we ask God some stuff and we ask amiss. Because God knows. We ain't asking for the right reason. Right. right. It's not according to it. We're not come, come stay with me now. I'm going to work with this a little bit. Because that's what it says now. You read it in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do. Mm -hmm. You don't know what is his name. When it says to ask it in the name of Jesus, don't say Jesus, give me Jesus, Jesus. I want to. No, that ain't what it's saying. To ask anything in God's name. Means to ask it by his authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to prove that it is God's will for you to have it. Right. right. Not all these little temporal things that we talk about, because that comes through seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yeah. And then God said, I'll give you all these things. Right. 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 Everything that's natural to man, you'll be able to eat, have a place to stay, and you'll be able to clothe yourself. He said, That's no problem. Right. These are the things I'll give to you. So if you want to get dressed up, all you have to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. And it's right. He's already told you. I'll give you these things as you go about. Mm -hmm. But though, what, about those, what about those things? Good health. And what about God protecting my family and, and, and giving me the, the mind to make provision for me? Come on now. Those are things that we, we, we worry about a lot of times, don't we? Those are things God said, I can bless you with whatever you ask in my name. He said, I'll do it. Right. Most of the time you ask us, well, what you want to be in life? I want to be a doctor. Why? Because I can help people. Why? So I can make a lot of money. Why you want a lot of money? So I can do the things I want to do. Why you want to do the things you want to do? So I can be crazy and foolish. Yes, yeah. <laughs> See, if you examine the why, then you'll find out, is it for the love of God? Right. And God knows what love looks like. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now listen here. I, I, got, I got to hurry now. I got, now I got to start preaching. Now I got to get to my notes. Amen. <laughs> and I, 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 I got to let 10 minutes to do it. Look, what I'm saying to us, y'all, is this. What is our love relationship is with God? Mm -hmm. See, in order to get the things that we need, in order to make us happy and to, mm -hmm. and to please God, it got to be according to his will. Mm -hmm. And it's based on our love relationship with God. Right. Not just any relationship, but a love relationship, church. Sometimes we don't understand. You can have a relationship with anybody, but if it's a love relationship, it makes the difference. Uh -huh. Amen. Because a love relationship requires commitment. Amen. It requires dedication. Right. Oh, we, it requires some time, don't it? In a love relationship. We ain't going to always see things eye to eye. Right. But we're committed to the relationship. Why? Because we love. The scriptures a lot of times tell us as human beings it's easy for us to forget. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible always talking about remember. Because God knows how easy it is for us to get. Listen to this in Hebrews 2 and 1. It said, therefore I ought to give more earnest, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. That's the end of time they should slip. See, sometimes we think uh, that's why it's important for us to be here in the assembly because to hear the word of God because the less you hear it, the more opportunity for you to forget about it. Amen. That's why we need to give more earnest heed to the things that we heard. How can I give more earnest heed or more attention to it is by studying it and meditating upon it. Therefore, I hear that word in my heart. That I may not sin against you. Right. Why? It ain't slipped out. I ain't forgot about it. Mm -hmm. I continue to meditate on it so it can keep me pure and keep me right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if I stay in the right relationship with God, the things that I desire, the things that I need according to his name, right. he'll give it to me because he promised it. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. God ain't never let nobody down. Amen. He ain't never let nobody down. 
Because he's God. And not just because he's God, he's a loving God. True. So therefore, he said, I'd never leave you nor forsake you. But the problem is, if you love me, see, that's a, that, if there, that means there's a possibility maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe you just think you love God. Right. Maybe you think you got a love relationship. Maybe you think you are in love. Right. Hey, amen. There's a lot of times we call ourselves in love and find out we wasn't in love. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all getting quiet now. All right. <laughs> See, love don't tell you what you will do. Love will tell you what you have to do. Amen. A -a 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 <laughs> see, see y'all get quiet now. Get serious now. Yeah. It's easy to forget how we got to the place that we are today. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible always telling us to remember. And that's why we got to always study. Because we didn't pull ourselves up by our own bootstrap. It was with the help of God that we got to where we at now. Amen. Our intelligence couldn't get us this far. Our honesty most definitely didn't get us here. Amen. It's easy for us to get uh, where we came from and how we got here. How we came through the storms and the trials of tribulation. How we got through some of the mind twisted situations, some of the financial devastation that we suffered during the year. We didn't get there because we were so intelligent. We got through some of those things because we love God. Mm -hmm. And God got us through our situation. I thank God that he did. But we're going to have to love God enough because let me tell you something. There's some things that can blow us off track Amen. if we're not careful. Am I right about it? Amen. It's because of the goodness of Almighty God that we got here. Right. That's the reason why we're here today. It's because of the love of God for us and humanity that we live and exist. Amen. Nothing that we did and nothing that we can do. There are flaws in our thinking that cause us to have flaws in our function. Amen, church. Amen. You don't just automatically do flawless things without thinking about them. <laughs> and if you have flawless things, sometimes it comes from not thinking at all. <laughs> Amen. We got to think about what we do in everyday life. Right. See, love calls you to focus and to concentrate because you realize there is a commitment to the relationship. Amen. You can't just do anything anyhow. Right. Are y'all with me now? Yes. Right. You just can't. So therefore, if you got a flaw in your thinking, there's going to be a flaw in your function. Deuteronomy 8, uh, 14 says this. There, there, uh, listen to this. <coughs> then that heart will be lifted up. This is what we've got to understand. Because sometimes when God gives us the house that we want, the car that we want, the woman that we want, the man that we want, the bank account that we want, the education that we desire, sometimes we begin to leave God because we feel like we didn't arrive. Mm. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. You get a two dollar raise, you think you're better than what you was last week. Go out there and buy a car for two dollars. You got to be kidding. That lets me know something wrong without thinking. It is. A two dollar raise shouldn't buy a fifty seven thousand dollar car. You go home and do the math, but yet we get a two dollar raise. Well, no, I gotta get me a new car. <laughs> Amen. Because there's a flaw in our thinking. Right. Which put a flaw in our function. Listen to this Deuteronomy 18 and 14. I, I mean 8 and 14. And I want you to get it. Then thou heart will be lift up. And thou will forget the Lord thou God. Which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. For, for, uh, from the house of bondage. Look what he said to the children of Israel. You know. Uh, just like they were. We are too. Sometimes when God pulls us up out of the muck and the mire of our situation. We have a tendency to forget. Or forget what God done for us. We start acting all funny and act like we all that, don't we? Mm. Amen. Because we're no, no longer plagued by the situation that God delivered us from. And just like the children of Israel thought they were better than what they were, when God had to take them out in the wilderness, keep them out there because of their thinking. Right. Because God couldn't take us to, he, just like he couldn't take them to where he was headed, with that kind of mindset, he can't take us. Mm. With the same kind of mindset. Right. What things turn you around? When you get in the house, get the house that you want, get the car that you always pray for, desire the job that you've been praying for, when you get the education, what, what, what changed your heart? Mm -hmm. uh, we got to understand, if God ain't behind it, then you just change temporarily. Mm -hmm. Because what if you lose those things? Right. See, 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 see. You can lose those things and yet still have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Job had to understand that after God had tried Job. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
And Job kept his integrity. He, he understood something about God. When we call, God ain't connected. Or our, our, our worship and love to God is not connected to our stuff. Amen. Right. Yeah. And our thing. Mm -hmm. We have our theology always. If God love me, God will give me. No, God said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. Amen. And if you keep my commandment, you'll go, you won't go lack it. Amen. Right? So Job was challenged by the devil. <coughs> he said, you God, do Job serve God for not? Look all that you gave him. Look how you blessed him. You, you even, after blessing him, you put a hedge around him. I want you to understand where that hedge comes from. That hedge came from his integrity. God just didn't put it around him and say he couldn't be bothered with. Job put it around himself by saying, I love God enough not to be involved in. Mm. And then he made sacrifice for his sons just in case they did it. Mm -hmm. It was Job's relationship or his love relationship with God. Right. And God placed his hedge around Job. Mm -hmm. And the devil said, if you remove that hedge, I'll make him curse you to your face. Mm. First thing he started messing with was his stuff. Took his children. Didn't bother Job because his relationship with God wasn't attached to the stuff that God blessed him with. Mm -hmm. It was a relationship that he developed for himself by himself to God. Mm -hmm. So when, 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 when your stuff gets taken and you lose your stuff, you don't lose your relationship with God. You don't accuse and blame God for causing you to lose. Because look what Job did after everything happened. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name still blessed in my mouth. And I will still forever praise him. Even